welcome to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. If you've ever wondered what people would say about you at your funeral and how you'd be remembered, that's something that we call personal brand. And on tonight's show, we're going to learn all about personal branding, in essence, your reputation, and how you can build it, leverage it, and use it to create your own dream job or even your own dream side hustle. We've got a terrific panel of guests joining us tonight, and I am so pleased that they are sharing their expertise with you. First, I am so pleased to introduce Erin Blasky. Erin started her first company at the age of 21 and has been in love with startups ever since. Now she's the director of marketing at LSPARC, a national startup accelerator. Erin is a Google certified speaker, a TEDx speaker, and a digital marketing strategist who specializes in brand storytelling. You're a busy lady, Erin, I'm so pleased that you're able to carve some time out to join Thank us tonight. You. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. We're also joined by Regan Bradley, who spends her days facilitating creative projects as an account manager at Macmillan Advertising Agency. By night, Regan is a community builder. She actually hosts a wonderful monthly speaker series for entrepreneurs, and I was lucky enough, Regan, to nab the last ticket at your sold out event last week. So I'm really excited to have you here with us tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, thank you for coming to my event as well. I look forward to this chat. And I want to plug your next event that's coming up later this month in April. Yes, it's at April 25th. It's on cannabis and entrepreneurship, and it's hosted at Shopify. So how entrepreneurs can get a piece of that pot pie. Yes, <laughs> in the budding cannabis yes, industry. Yeah, it's a hot topic for sure. <laughs> later on in the show, we will be joined by motivational speaker, leader, and entrepreneur Fahad Al-Hattab and the lovely CEO of TST, Sheena Brady. So make sure you stick around for that, else they'll be giving away some pretty exciting prizes. And as always, we welcome your questions, so please join in the conversation anytime and call us at 613-728-1001. Erin, I was watching part of your TED Talk on YouTube the other day, and I was struck by this beautiful analogy that you used about walking through the greeting card aisle and not finding any greeting card that you can relate to. And I mean, I think that's an experience many of us can relate to. This this doesn't speak to what I want to say, this does not relate to my life. And so not finding a greeting card you can relate to is obviously a tremendous opportunity as an entrepreneur, you know, you can create your own, but it's yeah. also exceptionally lonely. And so I wanted to ask you how being outside of the status quo has propelled your own brand and motivated who you are today. Yeah, and I think the greeting card one was, was perfect because for me, I, I sort of was, I found myself at a time in my life where I was up against a lot of different decisions that, like you said, were outside of the status quo. So I, quo, so I was um, running my own business. I had gone through a divorce. Uh, there was many things that I was doing that kind of put me, I would say, outside of the norm. Um, but I didn't let that hold me back from sharing it though. So I actually found myself turning to the internet and turning to social uh, and sharing a lot of those stories and finding communities of people that were going through very similar situations or who were maybe just kind of at the, st at the start of their own journey through something like that. Um, I think it's choosing the, the non-status quo has always served me because I've, I've always listened to what I've wanted. I've not kind of gone with what's normal or what, I, what was expected of me. Um, it led me to starting my company at 21. I don't think I would have done that if I was looking to just kind of get a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's also opened up a lot of different doors, especially through things like social media. Uh, you know, just putting myself out there connecting with people human to human has really, I think, given me a lot of opportunities that I don't think I would have had otherwise. And in addition to being extremely healing, I imagine, as well, and very empowering. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I really try to write from my scars as opposed to my wounds, and that's something that I think anyone that's sort of thinking about sharing kind of more personal, deep stories has to think about is how do you share it from a place of once you've kind of gone through it and learned, rather than being right in the midst of it, because it's not always that useful, especially with the critics on the internet, yeah. sharing you know exactly your hurt when you're in your hurt. Dealing so. with trolls is, is never fun. <laughs> and authenticity is very important. Rick, and I want to hear about your journey and, and sort of what motivates you and how would you describe your own personal brand? Yeah, so when it comes to kind of new opportunities, I'm like a kid in the candy store. Anything that's new, shiny, exciting, I kind of run towards it. And that doesn't mean that I'm getting a new job every six months. That might mean a really new, interesting project at work or getting to meet someone that you are like are inspired by and you haven't had a conversation with yet. Um, so, you know, 
life's like kind of like trial and error, right? And for every trial that you do, you learn something new. In every area, you need learn something new as well. So if I kind of like put it on myself, um, when I worked for the government, I learned that I didn't want to work for a company with a lot of bureaucracy. Then when I worked for a serial entrepreneur, I kind of opened up my world to entrepreneurship. Then I volunteered as a director of events at the International Association of Business Communicators. And that kind of gave me the confidence and the toolkit to then be able to apply for my dream job at McMillan. And kind of all of those experiences blended together led me to have the confidence to take on the role to um, as the host at Local Talks and plan these monthly events for entrepreneurs. Do you ever deal with imposter syndrome? Like, do you ever have thoughts about, you know, what makes me interesting? What makes me worthy? Why would anyone want to know about me? I see you nodding your head, Erin. Yeah, I deal with it all the time. And I think it's, it's every single time that I have to put myself out there. Every single time I look at an opportunity and I think I want that, I always end up finding myself still having a little bit of doubt in the background. Even though I consider myself a fairly fearless person, um, I, I still find that there's things I look at and I'm like, hmm, can I really do that? Is that really something that I can achieve? And I don't know that that really ever goes away. I think that there's moments where you get a little more used to it um, sometimes, and then other times I think you still bump up against the why me. Um, but I was actually mentoring at, uh, at an event recently, and someone said the most profound quote related to this, and they said, if not me, who? And if not now, when? And I, I realized, uh, it kind of like I, I'd never heard it said that way, and I realized that even if I don't feel like I've earned it, deserve it, and worthy of it, um, I still need to go for it, even if I'm not quite ready. And Reagan, as someone who works in advertising and marketing during the day, um, I, I guess you've seen firsthand how fickle consumers can be, how tastes change, and how have you applied that to your own branding and you know your own journey? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm always adapting. Yeah. Like, like your personal brand is a journey, right? Like, and it evolves with you. And so that's like really what the beauty of a personal brand is, right? It is who you project your, the way that you project yourself into the world. And I guess if you remain static, you'd be kind of boring. Yeah, absolutely. And to kind of echo what you were saying on the imposter syndrome, like I feel that all the time. I'm up there once a month speaking to entrepreneurs about entrepreneurship. And when I, you know, when people start asking me a kind of about that space, I didn't really feel comfortable giving that advice, but I did a little bit of introspecting, and what I'm doing is entrepreneurial, right? Like, I'm Absolutely. putting my form of creativity into the world, so I think with anybody that feels that, you know, they're young and they're trying to get their feet wet, that it's important to just kind of go for it, and the more you practice, the more you kind of gain that area of expertise. Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect. We have a caller on the line. Emily, are you with us? Hi. Hi, Emily. Thank you so much for joining us. Did you have a question for our guests? Yeah, I just... Um, wanted some insight on your thoughts maybe at what point do you have to consider hiring someone to help you with your branding mm. Mm, good point what do you think yeah so I, I ran my own consulting business for a really long time which meant that I outsourced a lot of work to those con those subcontractors um, in my company I, I think it's always a matter of you want to own the voice you never want to delegate out your voice because it's not an authentic way to you know proceed forward with something like personal branding um, but you can delegate out things like the scheduling of posts as an example um, I would say maybe some of the light engagement so things like liking posts or retweeting but even that it's you have to be really careful I would never I would never um, suggest delegating out the commenting for example because again that's your voice so I think anything you're writing I would always suggest that you do it I, I think the other piece that you could probably delegate out would be things like graphic design so if there's if there's content you're creating uh, you know you can delegate out the, the graphic piece of that and I think that that's something that's a little bit easier because it's more visual um, I think it's easier when you have a business brand than a personal brand though mm -hmm. you know your business brand it's very easy to delegate out a lot of those pieces um, I find personal I struggle with so that. I struggle with that myself with my personal brand because mm -hmm. I already have a set idea in my mind of what I want to say and what yeah. I want it to look like and no one can crawl inside my headspace and figure it out for me and I, I almost find it takes more time to tell someone about it than it would 
to do it myself. What, what are your thoughts on this topic, Regan? So I've worked with a couple of entrepreneurs helping them do their personal brand. And like you said, your voice should be very authentic, but sometimes people have a hard time carving out what their voice is or what message they want to put into the world. People, um, you know, people don't have a singular focus. People have very diverse interests. So it might also help to get someone on board to help like laser your message. So something that I um, learned from some brand strategists that I worked with is the kind of the concept of a brand sentence. So there's three components of that. It's kind of who you are and what you're doing, what your aspiration is, and then what your offer is that you want to put into the world. So using as myself as an example, I am a creative project manager, community builder, a brand strategist, so that would be my aspiration, mm -hmm. who plans creative events and facilitates rebrands. Yeah. So, you know, kind of putting all of that together in a nice little package could be someone that a brand expert could completely help you out with. Mm -hmm. And then to add to that, like visual, like getting your visual identity wrapped up um, is something that you could outsource to a graphic designer or someone that has a photographer, you know, anybody that kind of specialize in that space. Thank you so much for calling in, Emily. So in layman's terms, Erin, what is a personal brand and why is it important? Yeah, so I like to look at a personal brand as being essentially all of the components that make you you. And I, the way that I approach it myself is that I never want to feel like I'm a different person, whether we're sitting across the table from each other right here, or if I'm on Twitter or Instagram, or if, we're at, if I'm at a business event, I, I am the same person. And that person is somewhat socially awkward at times. Um, As we all are. <laughs> yeah, very. Uh, well, I can be very socially <laughs> awkward, um, but you know, I never want to. I don't want to have to feel as though I'm putting on a face or a show. You know, I, I just like to be myself all the time, and so I think it's all of those components, and and then and then it's how you, how do you take all of those components about who you are and actually translate those across different mediums, whether it's a blog or or Instagram or Twitter, um, in an effort to connect with other people who might be relating to your story or going through something similar or in uh, you know some cases it's to sell something um, even though I try really hard not to do a whole lot of selling through my own personal brand um, but I think it really is about it, we're all going through a really human journey and, and having a lot of very human emotions and so how can we leverage those platforms with our message and really you know connect with other people is kind of how I view it which is you know not always the most sort of business forward yeah. approach, but it's um, it's just how I approach my personal brand. We're just about yeah. to go to break in a few seconds, but when we come back, I want to learn more about some of the tips and tricks that you both have on you know leveraging what you have to say and how to reach your audience and mm -hmm. how to make stories that resonate emotionally with your audience. So don't go away. We've got lots more. We'll be right back after the break. Join us on Ottawa Eats. From fine dining to food trucks, we explore some of the best and most popular places to eat in the city, discover a wide range of cuisines, and taste some incredibly delectable food. Join us on Ottawa Eats. I'm Paula Roy from Paula Roy's Favorite Foods. Catch my show each week when I'm going to share with you some of my favorite recipes to make your home cooking more fun and more successful. Hi, my name is Ken Malcolm and I'm a volunteer here at Rogers TV. I retired from commercial banking four years ago and have been volunteering here at Rogers for the past three years. I like to give back to the community and Daytime Ottawa is all about the community. I would recommend Rogers TV to anyone interested in volunteering. So what are you waiting for? I'm Jennifer Anderson and I'm Allison Schaefer and we are the hosts of The Parenting Show. How great that Rogers has a TV show where we can address all the common parenting issues. It's all the issues that you face and to let you know that you are not alone. And I can offer you some great expert advice. Things like picky eating, how to get your kids to sleep, dealing with those blowouts at homework time. All those things and more right here on Rogers TV.
Welcome back to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and on tonight's show, we're talking all about personal branding with special guests Regan Bradley and Aaron Blasky. So before we went to break, we talked a little bit about what we would talk about in this segment, which is um, what are some tips and tools of the trade? How do you reach your audience? But before we get into that, you know, why should someone ever consider building a brand? And what are some challenges or obstacles that might come up along the way? Yeah, I don't mind jumping in yeah, first for this one. Um, so I look at it as, as having a, we'll say, multiple benefits. So um, there's there's an article I wrote recently on LinkedIn. It's still on my LinkedIn page if anyone wants to go check it out. But it's uh, essentially on how you can use a personal brand to job seek. So a lot of people kind of approach job seeking like they'll you know look at job postings, they'll send in a CV or a resume, and they wait. And and I I actually have a very uh, anti waiting approach I'm not very patient um, so I like to be a lot more proactive and so I, in my view people can actually use their website their social media and other elements like a blog for example to establish their expertise or credibility and and actually have job like or the not jobs but the the actual companies that have these jobs seek them out instead and so I you know by establishing your thought leadership or, or getting credibility in the marketplace you actually are being a lot more proactive so instead of waiting you're you're putting yourself out there showing what you can do and you're sort of anticipating it's the much need more demonstrative before it arises yeah. we have a caller yeah. on the line Julie are you with us hi yes I am Hi, Julie thank you so much for calling did you have a question I do um, so like how would you brand yourself if you have very low self-esteem like, what are some good esteem boosters? Because I went to, like, I joined the group to, like, start selling makeup. That's all over Facebook. But I couldn't actually do it because I had such low self-esteem. I couldn't even do a live on how to put on, like, makeup. I was too, you know, low self-esteem. Uh, it's, it's a great question because it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there. What do you think, Regan? I would just say put it all out there. Mm -hmm. Put your guts on the table and people will react positively to you you know the the world is a harsh place but there's so many more nice people out there than negative people mm -hmm. and the negative people you don't want to kind of have you know be your followers in the first place if you are your authentic you people will be attracted to you so i just say go for it and you know i recommend like maybe even starting with your personal network so just being on your instagram you could start kind of getting comfortable in front of your friends by you know doing videos of yourself i did one before this and it i felt a little cringe before i was doing it but you know i was overwhelmed with the support that i got from peers you know people that i met in my network and I just would recommend just giving it a shot. Sometimes you forget how many people are actually on your side. What do you think, Erin? Yeah, I, I would definitely echo that. And I would say that finding yourself a small tribe of people that you really trust, whether it's a mentor or you know colleagues or whomever it is, that small tribe can make the difference in terms of being able to be there to support you and push you forward. And I agree, be fearless. You know, there's the only person stopping you from doing anything is yourself really and and I and it I know it's really hard I've gone through moments of burnout where I've had to come out the other side and with riddled with imposter syndrome and try to figure out how do I get back you know to myself again mm -hmm. um, and and the only way that I ever was able to do it was one small step at a time so I would do one small action test it out with a trusted network yeah. as Regan said and and then go from there so little bits at a time is it essential to be vulnerable when you're building a personal brand it's authentic yeah. I would argue yes right like people want to know who you are not just the picture-perfect you that you know how you communicate yourself online that's why like you said it's so important to be your, the same person online as you are offline so you're getting that consistent experience when you're meeting someone yeah I don't even know another way to exist to be honest mm. I, I don't know I don't know that anyone can really pull off well or at least at least in a way that is not so apparent um, you know being you know a different person on LinkedIn to a Instagram to in person to at a networking event I just I don't know that anyone can sustain that for yeah any length of time. And I think it certainly makes you more relatable if you're willing to be less than perfect mm -hmm. thank you so much for calling in Julie we have another caller on the line Crystal are you with us I am hi, hi Crystal did you have a question I did. I had a quick question. Um, understanding, you know, being authentic is important. I was just wondering, uh, maybe when there were days where you were finding being a little bit less inspired, where do you draw your inspiration from mm -hmm. when you're building a personal brand? Mm -hmm. 
I can take that. Yeah. I think it's really important to have your brand heroes. So I learned this from a brand um, strategist duo named Lauren Moore and Phil Palin. They're huge inspirations and brand heroes for me. Are they Canadian? And, no, they're, they are Canadian, okay. but they now live in California. Of course, where, where all the good talent yeah, goes, really, yeah, let's get yeah. real. We all need to migrate there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. But they kind of have the concept of, you know, find your brand heroes. So those are the people that have the brand that you aspire to. Look at what they're doing online. Look at what the message are that they post. Like, look at the platforms that they post on. And kind of, you know, don't copy them, but replicate those same patterns when building your own personal brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what inspires you? Yeah, I think I draw ins inspiration from anywhere and everywhere in my life. And I think it the more, if you kind of, uh, let's say, condition yourself to look for it at least once a day, um, you'll find it. And so mm -hmm. what I like to do is I sometimes I'll give myself challenges. Sometimes it's I need to post an Instagram post every single day, whether or not I'm doing anything Instagram worthy or not. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how many things you'll actually find in your day-to-day -day life that you wouldn't normally think is worth posting on Instagram, but when you when you look at it through a different lens, you realize actually there is something relatable here, or there's a story in, in it. And sometimes it's as simple as like cuddling up with my daughter, and then I you know share a story about the importance I'm having on her life or the impact. And so I think if you look for it, you'll find it. Yeah. And it really is, I think, about starting starting by just putting your your entire life experience through a different lens. Yeah, and being open to what you may find along the way, especially in unexpected places, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and also to add to that, it's kind of introspecting and looking at what you do in your day-to-day -day life. So, for example, I work in an advertising agency full-time. What can I talk about that kind of derives from mm -hmm. my experience? So I can talk about compelling case studies. I can talk about project management. I can talk about team leadership and just kind of like identifying those categories where you feel comfortable having a point of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for calling in, Crystal. We have another caller on the line. Julie, are you with us? Yeah. Hi, Julia. Thank you so much for watching. Did you have a uh, question? Um, I did. Uh, very much like um, the, your guest, my personal life has kind of gone through a massive change. So I'm kind of restarting a lot of parts of my life. And my business has slowed down, so I'm looking to kind of change that as well. And I'm, and, but I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate how to, like, like the social platforms that you should use um, for business, like, you know, that is business to business kind of work. That's a great segue for a question I wanted to ask you uh, in this segment. You know, what are some tips and tricks of the of the trade? Mm -hmm. So I think the the key thing that you said in there is to grow business, and I think LinkedIn is definitely by far one of the. Oh, and, and I should clarify, it depends on what your business yeah. is. Is this an inter interactive call? Can we are ask? You, are you still on the call? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do um, consulting work, so I do um, editing and proofreading mostly. Okay. Perfect, yeah, so I've, I, I spent 14 years building a consulting business. Um, all of my business came from online. All, it, it over time became mostly a referral-based business, but in the early days, I definitely leveraged digital to get clients. Um, I would say the LinkedIn is really good in terms of being really targeted and finding the right clients. Um, Twitter and Instagram are great to display your work or to show examples or, as you said, case studies, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I think the more you can show and tell, um, what you're doing, I think the more you'll attract the the right kind of people to that same work. Um, and I think that there's other sites like Upwork, for example, yeah. is a yeah fantastic uh, site that you can actually get projects through. Um, so you bid on work. Um, it's no different than bidding on an eBay item, except that you're actually bidding on a project. And it's it can be a really great feeder as well. So it, there's uh, lots of different ways you can do it. And I think in terms of the personal brand side, establishing your thought leadership and creativity, uh, so whether that's writing articles about the best ways to edit a document or um, you know five things you didn't know about editing, if we want to go with like the BuzzFeed style yeah, um, clickbait uh, article title. But um, there's, there's lots of things that you can do, but I would say establishing your expertise. And if you you don't want to go through creating a website and a blog and all of that, then you can you can actually uh, take advantage of LinkedIn's blog. Um, it's built into your profile. It, it's already there, and it takes seconds to you know not seconds to write the article, <laughs> but seconds no one's to good. no seconds to post it. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it can be a good avenue. As well. What about video and audio? I keep hearing the video and audio are king in 2019. Yeah, I actually just hosted a local talks panel on social media trends, and I asked the same question: Is con the content is king, especially video? 
question mark. <laughs> but um, what they said is through, um, at least they have business to consumer, that's where they are marketing to, that horizontal video on Instagram doesn't perform well. Mm -hmm. What is the rise right now, and if you look at Mike Posner's mm -hmm. new social media, I mean, new uh, music video, it's all done in vertical because that's how people are consuming content, right? Through their phones. So, you know, stories have really kind of enabled this huge change into the way that we consume content. So, mm -hmm. I recommend just starting to film things vertically. Yeah. Yeah. Even YouTube is um, kind of adopting their software for it as yeah. well. Thank you so much for calling in, uh, Julia. Um, I find that no one reads anymore, which is kind of scary and, mm -hmm. and interesting at the same time. Now, how do you come up with content that resonates emotionally with your audience? I, I'm a journalist myself, and so we're trained to write every story in such a way that answers the question in the first paragraph, why should the reader care? And do you apply those same elements with your personal brand? Do you start with an assumption that your audience already cares about what you're talking about or do you build it how does that work yeah I find for me I actually start with the what is getting me fired up yeah I would agree with that. yeah and I and I find that so I, I used to I used to take the approach of I must I must blog two to three times a week and you know you hear all these things where people are like you need to post this many times a day and you need to do all these kind of must must musts um, I I ditched that idea completely and instead I moved to I'm only going to write when I have something really important to say. And, and, not, and I'm not talking about tweets. I tweet about stuff that's not that important. <laughs> um, but I'm talking about like a content piece. So if I put something on LinkedIn and I've, and I've done a thoughtful piece, it's because I've gotten fired up about something or I've read something and I, and I knew that I had a, an opinion or something to add to it that would be of value. Um, so that's the approach I take now all the oh, time. You have uh, your, oh. your LinkedIn page. <laughs> There. there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I do write on LinkedIn. Yeah. I find it's a fantastic place right now, just because, as you mentioned, people aren't necessarily reading blogs as much anymore. Yeah. Um, there's still a place for them. Don't get me wrong. But I do find LinkedIn because I already have such a, an active network there. It's mm -hmm. really nice to post post yeah. articles there instead. Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. Now we only have a minute left before the end of our time together, Regan. I wanted to give you the chance to share your final thoughts with our audience and maybe tell us again about your next uh, local talks event later this month. Yeah, for anyone who's just kind of starting out in a position like me, I just want to remind everyone it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to ask for advice, mm -hmm. it's okay to seek for mentors because that's the only way that you're going to learn. So it's always good to just, doesn't have to be your best foot, just put one foot out there and just kind of jump into the water that's two feet beautiful. first. Thank you so much ladies for joining us tonight. We're at the end of our time tonight. We're so lucky to benefit Thank from you. your expertise. Don't go away after the break. We'll be back with special guest Sheena Brady and Fahad Al-Hattab. We'll be right back after the break. Play four games of bingo from the comfort of your own home each Monday at 7 p.m. for your chance to win money from our $2,000 regular bingo or $5,000 super bingo night. Kiwanis TV Bingo, Mondays at 7 p.m. on Rogers TV. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together we're stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. And I'm Dylan Black. Join us right here on Thursday, another brand new episode of Daytime Ottawa on Rogers TV at 1, 6 and 11 p.m. We'll find out about the new play Breathing Underwater, which was created by a local author. Children's book author Tim Holmes will be here to tell us how it's so easy to start a story. What a great guy. And we'll learn more about the good work that a new day youth and adult services does for the community right here on Rogers TV. So make plans to be with us Thursday, 1, 6 and 11 p.m. We'll see you then. Hi, I'm Aaron Beach, and I'm a volunteer here at Rogers TV. I've been a volunteer here at Rogers TV for six years. I work on Daytime Ottawa, Ottawa Today, Ottawa Experts, and Cultural Window. One of the reasons I like volunteering here at Rogers TV is because I get hands-on experience with uh, a lot of the great new technologies that I love. I'd recommend anyone to volunteer here if they're interested in getting into the TV field.
Welcome back to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. On tonight's show, we're talking about all things personal branding and how if you play your cards right, you can land your dream job or your dream side hustle. We're joined in studio right now by two brand new guests. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you Fahad Al-Hattab. He is a former at-risk child turned leader, entrepreneur, and keynote speaker. And some of his many accomplishments include launching a camp for underprivileged children, raising more than $1.2 million for Ottawa charities, and speaking to more than 35,000 people and counting. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I can't wait to learn more about what you've been up to, Fahad. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. And you're actually giving away a prize. Tell us about about that prize and how people can win. Yeah, so having a little, little bit of fun. So I said if, if you can uh, manage to follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, and then shoot me a DM, I'm offering a, a two-hour free, se free two-hour session coaching call on either your public speaking or leadership mentoring if you have a team and you're, and you're looking to grow your leadership skills. Wonderful. I'm excited to see who is going to win that. Uh, we're also joined tonight by the lovely Sheena Brady, who is the CEO of Tease T and having experienced dynamic challenges and barriers throughout her personal life and career while falling in love with tea along the way, Sheena has combined passion and purpose with entrepreneurship. Tease T supports women around the world, proceeds from every order, uh, every order supports organizations dedicated to to empowering women. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, Sheena. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And you're actually giving away a prize tonight. Yes. This prize right here on the table. Um, and what is it exactly? So we're giving away a collection of our best sellers at Tea's Tea. And uh, all you have to do is follow Tea's Tea on Instagram, uh, make a comment on our latest post, and we will pick someone at random to win our top sellers, um, which is worth over $75. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much oh, for giving that away. Um, Fahad, let's start with you and I like to talk about you know some of your struggles that began as an at-risk youth and how this paved the way towards your being um, you know this big-time keynote speaker tell us a little bit about you know your journey along the way yeah definitely um, yeah I mean we, we grew up uh, grew up here 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 in Ottawa we family moved to Canada in 1998 I was I was fairly young uh, but we moved in 98 and we moved into a three bedroom home in Vanier and there was eight of us um, so I'm one of I'm one of six kids and I have two three uh, three beautiful sisters and two brothers um, and we always I mean we always joke and we always laugh at the fact that my my dad's ingenious way of turning the boiler room into a bedroom for my older brother, oh, and wow. he covered he covered up you know the, the boiler and he put the carpet down. He put a he put a painting and I always say the best thing he ever did was he put the TV and the PS2 there yeah. and that was it yeah. right that made us all want to be there. But what it created was this sense of community in our family. Uh, this really this camaraderie this this way of, of living. We all shared really close spaces and and I say just down the road from there. Um, I was lucky to have this community center, the Boys and Girls Club. So I'm big, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with the Boys and Girls Club. I, I still do a ton of work with them. Uh, but luckily, just down the road, it was right there. And we would go there, we'd go to play sports, we'd go engage in leadership programs, we'd engage in art programs. And it was there that I think I got a real sense of community, a real sense of my purpose in, 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 in life and understanding how even those who might not have a lot to give still have so much to give to this world. And as being an immigrant and the pain of being an immigrant, is that part of your brand? You know, not necessarily. I don't think so. I think I, I, think I, I wear it uh, proudly in the sense that, you know, as, as a bit of a success story and a bit of a story. You know, I always say I, it, it, it didn't dawn on me until truly I started speaking a lot more. And I had a kid come up to me at a school. They had this huge school. I think there was like 1,200 students, and there's a group of five kids, all Arab kids, came up. And they said something very interesting. They said, you know, it's so nice to have a speaker that looks like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it never really, you know, I never really thought about it that way before um, until I heard it from them. And it, it made a difference. And sometimes when we when we look for success stories or we look for people who we can learn from, who we want to we want to have as our mentors. We want to we want to have a deeper connection in another way. Maybe they understand my story because I didn't grow up, you know, I, I wasn't born here. I have these additional struggles that someone might not uh, otherwise be able to relate to. Well, it's like what Aaron was saying in the previous segment. You want to find a greeting card that you can relate to. Yes, right? <laughs> that's yeah. a very good yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, Sheena, tell me about your story. And I know you've had some ups and downs along the mm -hmm. way. 
you know, a little bit of a metamorphosis from the caterpillar into the butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about your journey. Definitely. So I went to Algonquin College and I graduated for hotel restaurant management. And this was, oh my goodness, over 10 years ago, a while ago. And so my dream was to open a restaurant. And I worked relentlessly to get closer and closer towards that goal. Uh, I spent 10 years in hospitality leadership. It led me to work in some incredible cities like New York, San Francisco. Uh, finally ended up in Toronto to open up this beautiful hotel uh, and open up their tea program. That's how I kind of fell in love with tea along the way, uh, which is kind of like another side story to that. But throughout my hospitality career, uh, I was miserable and I didn't even know it because I thought here I was living the dream. You know, I'm working in an industry that I went to school for and I've got a great job at these high profile hotels. Uh, I'm getting paid well to do what I'm doing, but I'm miserable. I'm sacrificing relationships with friends, family, loved ones, uh, not even great relationships with my peers at work. And uh, in the hospitality industry, you know, you have, you work crazy hours and you're sacrificing nights, weekends, and holidays, essentially to please strangers at the end of the day, it's right? It's just not worth it. No, and I don't want to discredit anybody who's working in the hospitality industry and loving it, but it wasn't for me. And what was interesting is that it took me 10 years to realize how miserable I was. And my misery caught up to me in about 2012 or 2013 when I got fired from that beautiful hotel in Toronto. Was and that your aha moment? That was like, not at first. At first it was like denial, like how could this industry that I gave blood, sweat, blood, sweat and tears to make me feel disposable in an instant? It's not me, it's them. Uh, and then I realized, wait a minute, here I am fired from this job and I have nothing to show for it. You know, I had a failed relationship after four years that was off and on, uh, struggling with relationships with my family, with friends, with everything. And so I knew it was time to hit reset. Um, so with that, I'd started a tea company out of my condo in Toronto, a side hustle in every true sense of the word. It was just like blending herbs and teas and unique ingredients out of my condo, um, having people at work try it, having a few friends try it. It was nothing crazy, a couple dollars in sales, nothing crazy. Um, but I knew that that was a creative outlet that I was extremely passionate about. And I was very unexpected, it was unexpected to have that passion uh, come into my uh, mid 20s. Did you expect that that side hustle had potential to become a full time career? I did, and it, well, what's interesting about that is I knew it had potential, but I knew I needed a key differentiator, and so that's kind of where the branding kind of came into place, and so I took passion, which is tea, purpose, which was empowering women and helping to help create a support system for others, and combine that through entrepreneurship, and that's Tea's Tea to this day. So Tea's Tea now is in uh, 30 different countries. Our customers are literally all over the world. Um, we've reached some incredible milestones. It's technically a side hustle, even though I lead a team of seven people today, uh, and I also work full-time at Shopify. Wow. Yes. So there is, uh, it's still a side hustle, but I have to be careful with that word because there are people working for me who are helping move my side hustle to the next level every single day. Um, as I want to hear work. more about what it is that you both do and what makes you tick, but we have a caller on the line. Are you with us right now? Yes, Dan. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much for uh, watching the show. Did you have a question for our guests? I did. I'm actually thinking about brand. I'm starting my own business, and I want to know if it's better for me to brand my business or to brand myself and have this be an aspect of my, of my life, not as a separate entity. That's a really good question, one that I wanted to ask yeah. both of you. Is is there a separation? Is it intertwined? They're definitely intertwined. And to answer that question, I'd say do both. Uh, I think it's important to create a personal brand and a brand for your business, and both of those things can intersect. Uh, with my personal brand, you know, I talk a lot about tea and entrepreneurship and um, you know empowering others and so you know with my brand like I my personal brand I stay very authentic to that messaging and I think it kind of trickles naturally into the business as well early on especially in the first few years of T's tea talking about my personal brand I would talk about everything tea related how to cook with tea how to bake with tea tea infused cocktails um, all the different ways you can enjoy tea and guess what I just happen to have a tea company if you <laughs> need tea to complement like all those things that I'm talking about um, so I'd, I would try to brand yourself as an expert in it in what it is that you do and what you're passionate about and let that trickle into your branding for your business and what about you Fahad? I guess it depends on the type of business you're starting, right? So I, I wish the caller was still on. We can ask him that question. Like, what what industry? Are you? St oh, are you still with us? I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. What what type of business are you in? A podcast producer. Mm, podcast. Uh, so in that case, so I, th I think there's a, an opportunity there. I would say for a very personal brand, right? I think a podcast for when people are tuning in, they want to hear you. They want to hear your ideas, your thoughts, and I would I would say you know. 
It's Dan, Dan's podcast, uh, here to showcase. And then like another name, you can Dan's talks about food, right? And it, it's you've got a little bit of a, a brand name, but it, it holds on to you. So you just gotta, put Dan in there as often as possible. Because I think when, exactly, I think when it comes to social media, when it comes to some of these brands where you are the product, and very much in this idea with a podcast, your ideas are the product. Your, your message is the product. That's what people are tuning into. They want to hear it from you. When you are the product, I think you brand yourself. Yeah, and to Pat's point, like, I completely agree. And at the same time, too, you know, whatever uh, Dan's content, you know, goals are for the podcast should be the content for his personal brand. Like maybe it's a Game of Thrones podcast. I've never watched a single episode. It's just Me they mentioned it on the other episode. <laughs> Side note, Matt Leave, my goal was to watch every single episode. I've watched zero. But anyway. <laughs> that could be part um, of your brand. Maybe, yeah. yeah. So if yeah. Dan's really into Game of Thrones, he should be talking about that in his personal branding as much as possible so that as the podcast is slowly gaining more traction, people already know Dan is like the expert go to mm -hmm. guy for Game of Thrones. They're gonna take him seriously and want to subscribe to that podcast and opportunities will come out of that I imagine Absolutely. keynote speeches and writing a guest column and you know things like that I imagine mm -hmm. that's how it, it started for you Fahad I don't say, yeah honestly I always say I uh, I laugh at this one of the one of the first moments I think I, I was in I was in university and I had a couple past teachers uh, contact me and they say hey Fahad uh, we've heard you've been doing some cool stuff in the community you started this camp you're doing some fundraising we'd love for you to come back to like the high school and speak to the students it's like yeah for sure go in and just talking to some of the students telling them some of the cool stuff that we're doing some of the activities how we're fundraising money I did one school I did two school I think the third or fourth school I get a call from my older brother's guidance counselor he's at a different school now and he calls me randomly it's, I think it was like 5 p.m. And I pick up the phone, I'm like, hi, it's Fad speaking. And he's like, hi, was your older brother's teacher and all that? He's like, we're looking for a keynote speaker to come to our leadership conference for the students. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, um, can I connect you with someone? He's like, no, no, we're looking for you. Okay, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, what do you want to talk about? He's like, I want to, you know, how do we create a legacy? How do we create community impact? How do we help our students think beyond themselves as leaders? And I was like, cool, yeah, I can, I can definitely put something together. And then he asked me the question, so how much do you charge? Hmm. <laughs> and light bulb, I, light bulb moment, right? and I remember being on the phone and just la I, I laughed. I burst. I just laughed out loud. I was like, I was like, honestly, like uh, I don't. I don't get. I don't get paid. Like I do this for fun. Like, I, you I, probably I, didn't even know that I you mean, could get paid for this. I was like, speakers are astronauts, Olympians. Like you know, like I had to yeah. be the president yeah. of the United States we, before uh, I could be a speaker. We only right? have thirty seconds before we go to break, but I want to remind everyone that if you want to win a free coaching with Fahad, that you need to follow Fahad on social media and shoot him a uh, DM. And Sheena, tell us again about how we can win the uh, lovely tea package that yes. you brought in. Yes. So just simply follow Tea's on Instagram. It's Tea's underscore T. Leave a comment on our latest post and we will pick someone at random. Perfect. Well, we'll be uh, right back after the break. I, I want to hear more about building leadership capacity and how you find courage to do some of the things that you're doing so well today. So we'll be right back after the break. You know the story. When the RCAF said Mach 2 fighter, two place, 1,000 mile range, the British said it was impossible. The Yanks tried twice and failed. They said, you're dreaming. We said, fine, we'll build it right here in Toronto. And now you guys, my guys, are saying that it can't be done, that they were right? Now that's the rocket that we used to get the model up to speed, and then the onboard sensor tells them. Come on, baby. Damn it! But we did it according to your specs. The specs have changed. canceled the project and destroyed the prototypes, the Avro Arrow remains for Canada a world benchmark in aerospace achievement. Hey, did you know? More than 4,500 Canadians are waiting for an organ transplant right now. Right now. 4,500. People are dying. And you could save a life. 90% of Canadians say they're willing to donate their organs. But only a few are registered. So what are you waiting for? Get registered. It's easy and it's free. Leave a legacy. Be a hero. Save, Save a life. life. Find out how to register today. Go to kidney.ca. Uninterrupted speeches from Canada's business leaders, visionaries, and social figures. Watch Podium Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. on Rogers TV. 
Each week on Real Talk with Sarah, I'm joined by experts in the field of wellness who share their expertise and guide us to optimal health of mind, body, and soul. Join me Sundays at 8 p.m. for Real Talk with Sarah on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and we're talking about personal branding tonight with special guests Fahad Al Hatab and Sheena Brady. So, one question I wanted to ask you both is you know, when it comes to making that jump into entrepreneurship, a lot of people say, just go for it, just jump in there, just get both your feet wet. But the irony of it is that those people who are telling you to jump in with both feet are, are ones who might have a day job or a spouse or some kind of safety net. So, what happens when you don't have any of those things? You know, what would what would you do, Fahad, or what would your advice be to people like that? Yeah, so actually the, the biggest advice I always give is is that you have to compare jumping into entrepreneurship and your career similar to you would if you were investing money. And the investing money they say you want to have a balanced portfolio, some risky items, some non risky items, and all the things in between. You have to think of your career in the same way. Taking on entrepreneurship, full on your own business is high risk. So how are you mitigating risk in other parts of your life? And so I, I think of that even in terms of if you are first trying to take that jump, don't take the jump actually. Start it as a side hustle. If you can't spend your weekends working on this business, then maybe you don't want this business. If you can't spend a few extra evenings working on this business and making those you know, first elements, then maybe it's not the right one for you and that's okay. And I think there is this perception that we always have to go all in um, and that's just straight up a lie. You don't have to go all in. Actually, you can take a few baby steps and you can start to get some traction. And what I would say to actually a lot of people, prove that there's people who actually want your service before you start going all in and putting in your money. So do your research. Do your research. Don't assume. And, and, and not just research, but actually try and sell your service. Get your first customer, get your second customer, and then see if it's something that you want to create. Right? So people right away like, I want to create a website and a brand and all this stuff. Well wait, can you sell one thing first? Can, is there someone willing, not to just say we support you and we like your stuff on Instagram, no, 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 but I'm willing to give you money to do what you do. And if there is one customer, maybe there's two, maybe there's three, and if you can start getting those, then you'll feel more comfortable and you're like, oh, I have an extra 500 bucks coming in every month from my side hustle. Now I can start dedicating more, I'll reinvest that and I'll grow it. And eventually it comes to a point, a tipping point, where I tell most entrepreneurs, go take a part-time job, actually. So go from your full-time job, don't go from full-time job to straight up to entrepreneur full-time. No, go full-time job, part-time job entrepreneur, and then part-time job, and then full-time full entrepreneur, right? Like think of it as these steps as you balance your risk portfolio, mm -hmm. because being an entrepreneur is risky. Yeah. You don't know what money's gonna come in when and when it's gonna come in. And sometimes. I love that analogy. Sheena, we were talking earlier about the difficulties that female entrepreneurs specifically have with taking risk, and with things like financial literacy, mm -hmm. the fact that it's really not taught in school, Things like negotiating your salary, for ex for instance. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on some of the unique challenges that are faced by women? I know that you are uh, doing something to address this issue with your company, Definitely. which is wonderful. Yeah. So at TST, we faced so many dynamic challenges through funding. Um, you know, I my bank, I almost fired my bank. Like I don't even know how many times. And at one point, they got so like frustrated with me asking for money all the time. They were giving me business cards to other banks. Like that's wow. how hard it was to get funding. And I had purchase orders. I had a profitable company. I had everything that I thought looked good on paper, but what I found out is that I didn't know how to actually properly advocate for myself in a way that was financially literate, in a way that not only bankers could understand, but that they could also communicate to their underwriters who could also make sure they're not like they're checking those boxes, right? Uh, and so it took someone from BDC actually who came to my office in a kind of quick story. They sat down with me and they dissected my entire company and they were like, you know, what is your equity? What is, ask me all these things that sound pretty basic, but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know the answers. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I know what my equity is in my company? Like, what is the magic formula that determines that, right? But these were conversations I did not have with my bank previously, so no wonder I failed. So finally, after this woman took so much time to invest in me, she brought my case back to BDC, and she said, I have great news, we have a loan for you, but, I think you should go back to your original bank and talk to them now in the way that we've prepared you because they can offer you likely better interest rates and better terms. Mm -hmm. And so the short of that whole story is I ended up doing that and then literally overnight I got a $50,000 line of credit and like a 100% increase on my credit card and like it put so much pressure off my business uh, and I just learned that the financial literacy piece was 
huge barrier for much longer than it should have been, probably about four years, to be honest. Wow. And I didn't even end up being a client of BDC, and now I'm a huge brand ambassador yeah. of BDC, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. just say. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how are you leveraging uh, your company, Tease Tea, to help other women entrepreneurs yeah. who, are, who are just starting out? Great question. So this is a passion project I'm so excited about, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about it. So with Tease Tea, you know, we design tea blends to help empower your goals and desires. So we like to think, however you're feeling, we have a tea to complement that. At the same time, you're empowering women around the world. As you mentioned earlier, we donate a portion of proceeds to organizations dedicated to women's empowerment. This passion project that stemmed from that is called the Tease Tea Founders Fund. Um, with the unique challenges that I've faced as a women entrepreneur that I learned are actually not that unique at all once I've spoken to other women entrepreneurs. Uh, mean they're not unique from country to country? Or? They're not unique from woman to woman. Okay. Women face, the, the data proves that the statistics, like less than 2% of funding went to VC, uh, Less, uh, less than two percent of funding went to um, uh, women-run. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. So the venture today. capitalists yes. basically don't tend to give money exactly. to women-led so, businesses, and, and why exactly. is that? So less than two percent of that funding went to women-led ventures. Oh my goodness, finally <laughs> got that out. Okay, and so um, many reasons: the financial literacy piece, women not knowing how to advocate for themselves with confidence, women not knowing how to approach these conversations with venture and capitalists. You were once one of those women too. Absolutely. And so with TST, we've created the TST Founders Fund, and it's a it's a founders fund for Canadian women identifying entrepreneurs. And we specifically want to highlight marginalized folks are women who come from unique challenges and different barriers and different backgrounds and have access to funding community and mentorship and so we are taking other successful entrepreneurs and saying what are you doing to pay your success forward and so with that we've brought together five other founders and we've raised over twenty thousand dollars in non repayable funding for uh, women led ventures and applications open um, April 9th but even more important than that Access of funding is super important, but what about the ongoing mentorship and community? And so we're also providing that. Every single applicant, even if you don't end up with funding at the end as a finalist, you will get mentorship and you will get specific, clear feedback on your application. That's amazing. So how do you apply? Yes, so you can go to the tstfoundersfund.com. Um, you can easily just go to our Instagram page as well to learn more information. Um, join our wait list and applications are opening next Tuesday, which is very exciting. So is it a rolling deadline or? So applications open uh, April 9th and then they close May 2nd. And then from there we have about three weeks. We have a, sele uh, a selection committee that are going to go through all the applicants, uh, narrow them down to our finalists, uh, and then it will be a combination of both um, peer voting um, so having your own your own loyal brand followers vote for you uh, in addition to having our um, judging our judges or our select selection committee be a part of the um, voting process this is, this is amazing I haven't come across many programs like this in there Canada. aren't enough there aren't nearly enough yeah. like even the government had this huge program to fund women called the women entrepreneurship strategy and they got flooded with over 3,000 applications like they wow. did not expect to get that many and they thought they were going to be able to go through those applications in a month and it took them I think like over three months and, yeah. and I think that that's just a true testament of how much serious lack of funding there is uh, you know that, and, that isn't there for women. And yet the drive is there, the initiative is there. Oh absolutely. Yeah. Fahad before we went to break you were talking a little bit about that realization, that light bulb moment that made you realize that hey I can be charging for these services and so to that end I wanted to ask you, you know, how do you put a price tag on your expertise? How do you value yourself and do you ever work for free? Like people will say oh this is great exposure do you ever give your services or expertise away? And, and if you do, when is it worthwhile? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. I guess it's a two-part question. Yeah. We'll start with the, with, the free, uh, with the free one. Yes, I give my expertise away for free as much as possible, actually. As much as I can, given the circumstance. So I know how much time I have in a week, and I know what I need to get done. I know what my priorities are. And so if there's times that are open and someone needs help, I go and provide value. And I've... The only, and the only reason I preach that is because the amount of business that I've gotten from giving free talks and from giving free value and just putting myself out, uh, out there has been insane, has been insane. And a lot of people who are getting started, and I, I do less and less free stuff now because my schedule is busier and busier. And if it's, if it's packed, then I, I don't have time to do it. I don't do it. But when I was first starting off, I did a ton of free talks across the city. I did a ton of free workshops and I would continue to do them. And what I found was people found genuine value. And it also gave me a chance to practice new material. 
it gave me a chance to develop new content. Or if you're like me, you need a deadline to get things done. So I would book a talk and then say, oh, I got I to gotta write my new keynote. Yeah. And so I would you know, highly encourage a lot of people who are starting off with their personal brand, go do as much free work as possible. Because if it's there and it's available, do it, do it, do it. And then if someone who had you come in for free asks you to come in a second time, you say, hey, you really liked my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have money this time? Yeah. Right. It really works as a second time. Sometimes the first time, and and then you know the question comes around confidence and imposter syndrome, and and that's totally real. But if you've done like ten free gigs already, then your eleventh one, you don't feel as much of an imposter. You're like, I've done this. Like yes. this is this and is I legit. Guess the key here is that you're just starting out. So once you get to a point in your career where you're a pro and and you know what you're doing, you wouldn't do it for free anymore. Correct. Unless, for example, the Boys and Girls Club asked me to do their keynote charity. for their charity yeah. fundraiser. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll happily do that. Why? Because it, 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 it's important to me, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, I'm doing a corporate talk. So I'm going down to Toronto, I'm doing a corporate talk, and I, ha I know one of the schools has been asking me to come, and they can't afford my, my full rate. That's fine. I'm in Toronto already. I'm doing a corporate talk. I'll come in the afternoon. And I'll do your students for free okay. because I love it. And if yeah. it's if if we're truly honest and we're like we do love what we do, and yeah. some of us are blessed to have that, and some of us aren't, and, that, and that's totally fair, then why not do some of it for free if you can create value and you truly feel like you're creating an impact? As a woman, Sheena, do you have a different take on this? I actually echo a lot of sentiments. I mean, I've done national television like six or seven times. I've done a lot of panels, a lot of talks. Um, I have yet to charge. So now I'm starting <laughs> to think, okay, maybe I'm underestimating the value of uh, uh, some of these opportunities. Uh, but I, but to your point, like the more you get out there and speak, the more you are seen as a thought leader or, you know, expert in that field. And so, you know, going back to personal branding, same thing with like Instagram. Like I, I am very authentic about the things that I post that are that matter to me, that are important to me, and those often result in panel opportunities. Like I was on one of Reagan's panels actually, your guest that was just on um, before <laughs> us, and I think she found me on Instagram, but I'm not 100% certain. But regardless, you know, the more you put yourself out there, um, the more you're going to be seen. And then it's just a matter of at some point figuring out how you're gonna monetize yeah, but that. The actual pricing, how to figure out your pricing. In reality, the majority of us are not in a business that is brand new. Like mm -hmm. we're we're not revolutionary. Like we're if not you, reinventing the wheel. We're not. Yeah. So somebody out there in your market and with your level of expertise is charging. Go find out how much they're charging and undercut them by a hundred bucks. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. you, right? Yeah. And 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 go find out. You know what I say? I love when people put their client list on their website. There's the people who are paying. Yeah. Go look at your competitor's client list and go message those clients. So the lesson here for is service. don't put your client list no, on your website. <laughs> not necessarily, yeah, but yeah, for you yeah. to figure out who who's going to pay for my services. Yeah. Who's gonna, well, who find out who other money. people are, right? We're almost at the end of our time together. Just one last time, Sheena, what is the deadline for the program that you mentioned? Yes, yeah, so the TST Founders Fund opens April 9th, which is Tuesday, and then it closes on May 2nd. Beautiful, wonderful opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you so much to you both for coming in for sharing Thank your you. expertise with our guests. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the studio next week. Have a great evening.